So what happens when you take VR and combine it with a motion rig? Well, today, we're going to find out. Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk a bit about the experience of combining a motion platform and virtual reality for what I'd probably call the ultimate simulation experience. It's not without some caveats though, which could be minor or major depending on what rig you have, what headset you may or may not already own, and what the end goal that you have is. Now, I've been a bit of a VR nut uh, owning many of the major headsets, uh, from the original Rift CV1 to the Vive Pro, uh, Valve Index, Reverb G2, Pimax AKX, Quest 3, Vive Pro 2, and finally, the big screen beyond. Uh, for today's video, I'll be using the DOF Reality P3 rig behind me here, uh, and the big screen beyond headset uh, as the VR headset of choice. More on why in a minute. So why don't we hop in the rig, put on the headset, and we'll go do a quick lap in the pattern in the 172 and check it out. All right, so here we are in the Cessna 172. Uh, we're gonna do a quick lap in the pattern and see what a motion rig and VR is all about. All right, full power, engine instruments in the green. All right, I'll rotate. Okay, we'll start our crosswind turn here. Wait, wait, wait hold on a minute. Well, this, this doesn't feel right at all. This is okay. Um, well, that, that's, well, that's not very immersive at all. All right, so let's talk about uh, what happened and why there's a few things to consider doing VR on a motion rig. So, since the VR headset is tracking you in 3D space, what's happening on the motion rig is it's doing just that. Uh, as I'm banking in the turn, the headset is doing its thing and it's tracking me right through the, uh, the window in the frame of the airplane, which for obvious reasons is not what we want. So now, enter OpenXR Motion Compensation by Buzz T. Bear, a piece of software that eliminates this issue. Essentially, there's a center, uh, sensor that gets mounted to your rig and the software is reading the data from that sensor and my basic understanding is that it's doing some math and keeping your virtual viewpoint right where it should be, in the cockpit. Huge shout out to Buzz T. Bear, as without this software, none of this would be possible. So that sensor could be a controller, USB sensor, or a Vive tracker. I've pretty much experimented with all of them at this point, and they all have some pros and cons. Now, this won't be a how-to guide, but more of my experiences with each type of setup. So to start, I originally attempted this with my Reverb G2 and then the Quest 3. Uh, both of these are what's known as inside-out tracked headsets, which essentially means that you don't need any external sensors. They basically track themselves. Um, now, while that's nice for an ease of use and setup point of view, I ran into a few issues using these headsets on the motion rig. Uh, the sensor that I used, by the way, uh, for the motion compensation was the Whitmotion inclinometer. So the first issue I had, which ended up being the deal breaker for me, was I found that with both the Quest 3 and the Reverb, um, they seem to get a bit confused on the tracking, even without motion compensation on. Uh, the virtual view in the headset would seem to snap around a bit on where it thought it should be. Uh, this was most likely due to me having a 43-inch uh, reflective screen TV mounted to the rig messing with the tracking. Now, you may be okay if you're just using the rig strictly for VR uh, and don't have a display mounted to it. Now, I did have a bit better results using a smaller monitor at first, so that is something to keep in mind. The second issue with using just the whip motion sensor for motion compensation is that it's only going to do pitch and roll. Now this will work fine for two and even three degree of freedom rigs, uh, but won't be, uh, won't be able to compensate properly on a six degree of freedom rig. Now I don't have a, a six degree uh, rig, but I imagine that any heave, surge, and sway not being compensated for would probably be nauseating. And during my testing with you not being compensated for uh, on this rig, it wasn't that big of a deal to me and I barely noticed it. So this led me on to a bit of a quest to see if I could find a way to use an externally tracked controller. Uh, I went through using the headset's respective controllers, which worked pretty well, uh, except for them still being inside out. Uh, if the controller moved out of view of the headset, you'd lose compensation. Then I tried various hacky ways of using my index controller and Vive trackers, uh, 
even going so far as to mount one uh, tracker on the rig and then one on top of the Quest 3 headset. This was probably the most successful, however, still less than ideal. I'd still have tracking issues and the added weight of the tracker mounted on the headset made the Quest 3 uncomfortable to use. So it was at this point where I dug out my Valve Index for testing. The Index is an externally tracked headset, which means you do need the extra base station set up in order for it to work. Since I already had everything on hand, I figured I'd give it a go. I was blown away by how well everything worked. Granted, this was an older generation headset, which didn't have quite as high resolution as something like the Quest 3, but the fact that motion compensation worked so well, I was sold. This also has the added benefit of being able to compensate for all six degrees of freedom. Now that means if I have an upgrade to a six degree unit, I won't have to do anything different. Now fast forward a bit, and uh, I ended up impulse purchasing a Vive Pro 2 while waiting uh, on the order of the big screen beyond to arrive. Now, with both of these being externally tracked Steam VR based headsets, it allows for a full integration with the Vive trackers and controllers. It was pretty much plug everything in and go at that point. So now, all that's out of the way, let's jump back in and let's see the difference. All right, so we're back here in the rig. Let's go ahead and enable motion compensation and see the difference. Tracker calibrated, motion compensation activated. All right, we're all activated. Power engine instruments in the green. Airspeed is alive. Fifty, fifty-five, we're rotating. Now immediately, I could feel the difference. <clears throat> I didn't notice it right away on takeoff without motion compensation, but I was actually sinking back. My viewpoint was sinking back into the seat a little bit. And now, on climb out here, my viewpoint is saying the same, and all I'm feeling is almost what seems to be G-force, as obviously my body weight in the seat is being pressed back. Just past the departure end, just about 800 feet. We're going to turn our left crosswind now. And this feels totally different. As you can see, my viewpoint is just saying exactly where it was as we bank around and climb through this turn here. It is, is a totally different game-changing experience. So let's recap and talk about pros and cons. I think for most people, the con will be what VR gear they're already working with going into this. Now my experience has been the best with externally tracked headsets, however the price point of entry can be a bit steep. If I didn't have a headset already, something like the full Valve Index kit required to get going um, is probably around a thousand US. Now this is for the headset, controllers, and two base stations. Now that's for a headset that was ahead of its time and a great headset, but it's still an older generation headset. Something like the Quest 3 with its pancake lenses is fantastic but you may run into the previously mentioned issues that I had. So pros and cons. In the pro list, first and foremost, is immersion. A motion rig in VR with motion compensation is really just a next level experience. Probably the closest thing that you can get without actually getting a pilot's license. Add a plus in that column if you already own some VR gear and bonus points if it's in a modern externally tracked headset. Now as for the cons, and there's really only one that I can see, the cost of buying and set up a whole VR kit might be steep, especially if you don't already have any existing VR gear. And if you're using something with six degrees of freedom, it pretty much will be a requirement to have something that's externally tracked. All in all, when everything is set up with motion compensation, there is nothing more immersive than using a motion rig in VR. It really has a way of tricking your brain into thinking you're feeling some sort of G-force. Carrier launches and recoveries feel absolutely wild in DCS. Even feeling in-cloud turbulence in X-Plane and in Microsoft Flight Simulator when using real TurbCat just feels awesome. Being able to feel the acceleration of afterburners in DCS or the nose drop in a stall in a 172 is just absolutely incredible. I cannot recommend this setup enough. So folks, that's all for this video. 
If you want to catch the sim rig in action live, check me out on twitch.tv forward slash aviatorchris. Be well and fly safe.